Well, we welcome you to the best of Texas wrestling. And to prove that, we've got a pair of the best who are going to be competing with each other. Bruiser Brody will battle Nick Bockwinkle, who is the champion of the AWA. Up in the ring, Boyd Pierce is about to introduce this event. Let's pick him up. This event for the AWA heavyweight title, two out of three fall, 45 minute time limit. At 325 pounds, the challenger from New Mexico, Bruiser Brody. And in the blue corner, 245 pounds, the AWA heavyweight title holder, Nick Bockwinkle. Your referee for this title match, Bronco Lubitsch. Nick Bockwinkle puts his precious belt, emblematic of the supremacy in the American Wrestling Association. And you see the ease with which powerful Bronco Lubitsch was able to lift it. It's a big belt. But then it covers a big area. The AWA is prominent up throughout the Midwest, through uh, Minnesota, through Nebraska, and Michigan, Wisconsin, and in through Canada in the in that portion of Canada that is the middle part of the provinces. So it takes a big man and a big belt and a lot of ability to be rated as the champion of the AWA. There are three major wrestling groups. One is the AWA, one is the WWWF, Worldwide Wrestling Federation, which is based mainly in New York and the New England states and the National Wrestling Alliance, which has affiliated with promoters in Canada, Mexico, Japan, Korea, Australia, New Zealand, and all over the United States. And right now, champion Nick Bockwinkle of the AWA, and remember, we have not termed Nick Bockwinkle as a world heavyweight champion. We have said he is the champion of the AWA, and he may not be when this match is over, because Bruiser Brody is as intent as any challenger I have ever seen to teach the sometimes supercilious Mr. Bockwinkle a lesson. So it's Brody in the corner, and Bockwinkle trying to measure him, but Brody doesn't hang around for measurements. He has a style all his own. He can stand up and fight and battle with any man in the entire world. I have a great regard for his ability. And these fans have taken to him because of his sheer power and his willingness to always be Bruiser Brody. So Bockwinkle's in trouble as two men. That's what I'm talking about. Brody has won these fans by sheer vehemence of the manner in which he wrestles. He's got a front headlock. Bockwinkle caught. Brody recently trimmed down about 30 pounds in order to maintain his speed. Says that he's stronger at this weight than he was at... Uh, when he was 30 pounds heavier, and right now he is about 270. There's a rip across the face that has changed Bockwinkle's mind. Brody crowding, and he gets his teeth into something he doesn't. Bockwinkle hanging on to whatever is left of his face, and oh man, how Brody plowed him into that. Brody. This is Brody. This is Brody. Don't give them a chance to rest. Keep after them no matter where they go and keep punishing. And here he is carrying out his own axioms on AWA champion Nick Buckwinkle. This is the first fall. Brody would like very much to get a fall ahead on this um, event. with those fierce kicks. It has long been my impression that 
he could kick harder and more often than any man I have seen in this game in 47 years. And he, know, he uses those legs with amazing efficiency. Bockwinkle in trouble. Here is Brody looking to decapitate him. Oh, man. Oh, and look at those fans. Listen to those fans. Brody at his best as he lays the boot into Nick Buckwinkle. There's the slam bang approach of, of Brody and Buckwinkle's in deep and serious trouble. This may be the first fall of this match, but for Buckwinkle it could mean everything. He has taken a lashing from Brody. So, Brody is looking for the opportunity, but he is also looking toward the conclusion of this match, and if he can win it in one fall as a backbreaker, he is going to be that much further ahead. That's why he has not made an effort to pin Bachwinkle. He has made an effort to perhaps win this in one fall and make it impossible for him to return. Brody has had to take virtually no punishment. A combination spin, slam, and here is Brody on top. He did it! Here's Brody. Takes the first fall. Five minutes, 12 seconds, the challenger, Bruiser Brody. So Brody takes the first fall over Nick Bockwinkle, who is lying on the canvas on his back being administered to by his second and probably wondering what truck hit him and where it's likely to hit him again. We'll be back here in a moment to see if Nick Bockwinkle can make it for the second fall in this defense of his AWA title. Nick Bockwinkle had not risen to his feet and Bruiser Brody took right after him with the sound of the bell and Oh, he slammed him hard into that uh, corner. The ring here jumped right at our feet. And Brody follows him up, keeps after him, pours it to him. And Bachwinkle right now is having a tougher time than he has had in any dozen matches he's ever had in his life. Because the superiority of Bruiser Brody is apparent to every fan in this huge crowd here in the... Sam Houston Coliseum. Bachwinkle now trying his first offensive, real offensive move on, on Brody. The next snap and he got great cooperation from the rope that time, believe me. It drove him up and drove him backwards. using it to strangle Bruiser Brody. And there's that foot again now right in the same area, figuring that if he can keep Brody, Brody from breathing, and that he's going to hit, he didn't keep him from breathing, but he can wear him down that much quicker, and he's gonna have to wear down this bearded giant before he can make any claims about um, the outcome of this match. Again, snap of the rope, and this time Bachwinkle proves a depth that they're using not just the top rope, but all of the ropes. They're close to the, the rope on that far side, and look at Bachwinkle. He wondered what happened, what hit him, what, what threw him would probably be closer to the truth. And Brody, caught in those ropes, is wrapped up again. So Bruiser on the outside, fans screaming for him to get in there and get after Bachwinkle. And that's just what he does. He rarely uh, spends time on the outside of the ring unless he's out there pounding an opponent through the concrete. Brody 
What's that body of his? It's starting to stiffen. You see him now shaking off the effects of the punishment. As much as he's psyching himself up, saying he can't hurt me. And whether he can or not, Brody now is in a better position to defend himself. He doesn't think he can be hurt. And as Bruiser comes up, you see that slamming into the jaw of Nick Bockwinkle. So, Brody gives Nick Bockwinkle something to worry about. Chomping down on his eye at that time to uh, make, make him uncertain as to where the next attack is going to come. And Brody, there he is, pulling Bockwinkle out on the concrete, finding a, an open chair where the ring announcer has lately sat. And here he is now giving Bockwinkle an opportunity to possibly get a fall on a disqualification. But instead, since the infraction took place outside, Lubitsch let it go. Oh, 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 that's a big man to miss a, a fall like that. And uh, when you land this particularly as he did, sort of kind of wampus on the canvas, you are in a bad spot. Could have a fall. We got one. So the, he threw him off. Brody threw him off. Tossed him in the air. Four minutes, 12 seconds, the champion Nick Bockwinkle. He tossed him in the air, but before uh, the push came, Bockwinkle had gotten that three count out of referee Bronco Lubitsch. So it means that falls are even. Bockwinkle has his hand raised to indicate it and we have one more fall to go and he, Bockwinkle is complaining about the use of the chair on the outside of the ring. We'll be back here in a moment. There are 15 seconds left in the Interval between matches, which in this match, by request of both men, is only one minute. And here's the bell. And there's Bockwinkle. And Bockwinkle is trying to ring Bruiser Brody's bell for sure. So Brody, having taken uh, punishment that cost him that second fall, is on the tail end of... Well, Bockwinkle is desperate to remain champion, and knows that if he doesn't do it to Brody, Brody will do it to him. Brody never makes any pretenses about that. That rope snap again, and on the concrete is Brody. Looking up at that foot as though he would like to have bitten it off somewhere right around the ankle. He probably could have. And the um, referee trying to get Bockwinkle to give Brody a clear shot at getting into the into the ring and Brody has real problems that unyielding turnbuckle has blasted him off of the apron So Brody's outside. You see him again, smash this time into the steps that lead up into the ring. And Brody now, away from the ring, may have an opportunity to recover just a little bit better than he had in previous punishment. So Brody is cut. He has been slammed into the uh, turnbuckle, and into the steps. The blood is running down his face, and as he starts now for the ring, you see him being kicked away, and he is halfway up the aisle and in another direction, and Nick Buckwinkle, anxious for the count to take place, the, here comes Brody, no, that count is not going to stop him, because Buckwinkle has... Um, uh, broken the count and Bockwinkle senses this as his opportunity but there is 
the bruiser off on the floor. And cold concrete uh, is somewhat of a shock to him. You can bet it uh, goes down there. But there he is, bloody from the contact with the uh, steel of the turnbuckle and the contact with Nick Bockwinkle. And we, we've got Brody trying to get in, but running into Bockwinkle and, uh, every place he goes. And now that's the first chance he's had to do something about it. And as he grabs him, he plants that chair into the midsection of the exposed ribs of Nick Bockwinkle. And here is Brody's opportunity to get back into the ring. Listen to that crowd as they start screaming. Brody to blast him. Bockwinkle putting up a desperate fight now, but he's weakening. And Brody is unleashing with those powerhouse blows of his, and he can do it. There's another smackaroo. Oh, what a tremendous wallop. And Brody now, his head is starting to clear because he is timing those wallops to the uh, proper degree. And as he maneuvers in to pound away at Nick Bockwinkle, Bockwinkle is draped on that uh, um, turnbuckle and, not, and wasn't able to defend himself. Here's the bruiser looking for the chance to shoot in a... Uh, well, and shoot it and he did. He laid it in there. And Bruiser Brody is in complete command. This is the third and deciding fall. And Brody now, as he gets up there, wants to beat a tattoo on the head of Nick Bockwinkle. And there goes Bockwinkle now, throwing Brody over the top rope. We have, we're going to have a disqualification. Bruiser Brody is going to win this fall out of disqualification. And automatically and without question, Bruiser Brody was thrown over the top rope. There is no Four other minutes, decision the referee seconds. can give. His crowd Michael gives Lewis him a roar of approval. Nick Bockwinkle, the winner of the match, disqualification, Nick Bruiser Bockwinkle Brody. crawls out of the ring. Holding on to his title belt. He has lost the match. He, he has lost the decision. Brody has a, an empty victory here as he wins the match. Wins over the AWA champion who deliberately threw him over the top rope to save his title. And the referee can make no other decision. The rules say he must, must disqualify a man if there is a toss over the top rope and here we have Brody arguing he doesn't want to win he wants he wants Bockwinkle that's his argument and Brody says he is going to he's going to sit right there until Bockwinkle comes back and gets into the ring back here in a moment. We'll come back here and catch Bruiser Brody, but first let's pause for this word from the studio.